for a lot of college students, it was graduation weekend. We have any college students in here who may have graduated? Ooh, I see a couple hands. It's funny, I graduated from college quite a few years ago. What's so funny? <laughs> and at some point when graduation weekend rolls around, you, you kind of get to reminiscing. You're like, oh, back in the day when I was. And, and at some point, you find that box of college stuff. You know, like college pens and freshman orientation laundry bags or whatever. And one of the things I remember very clearly was my freshman orientation ID. My, my, my Morehouse College ID. Oh, oh y'all know about Morehouse. <laughs> Ooh, yes! Somebody know! I remember my Morehouse College ID because I remember the look on my face. I was so very happy to be there. And it wasn't just because I was in Atlanta and it was a great, you know, it was a great city in the history. I was so happy because I had gotten through registration. <laughs> oh my God, I think they do it on purpose. They make you take your student ID picture when you get past registration and financial aid because you'll like never be happier until you graduate. <laughs> so the look on my face was the super cheesy like, and you're like, wow, he's so happy to go to Morehouse College. And I was, but I knew the real reason behind that face. But then, you know, I had that ID, and then when I moved on to get my master's, it was time to get another ID. So now this ID, which I had treasured, which was a part of who I was, and I took it with me everywhere I went, mainly because you could get discounts on stuff. <laughs> Now, all of a sudden, I had to put that in a box. And you keep it for safekeeping just because you never know. <laughs> that, that sounds like someone still using their ID <laughs> who has graduated from college but is still getting discounts. I ain't judging you, but. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I moved on to grad school. I went to University of Virginia, got another ID there. And that picture was a little different. You know, I, was, I was a good five, six years older. I still had the same smile on my face, but the smile was different because it wasn't about where I had come from. The smile on my face was where I was going to. And so I knew I was stepping into an experience that was going to change my life yet again. Got through with my graduate uh, degree and then it was time to turn that ID in and move out to LA and get a grown man ID. No more college IDs, no more IDs with the school I went to on them. Now it's time to get to adulting. And I got a California state ID. And that was a different face altogether. <laughs> the very first one I had, I remember it because it was one of those things where people would see the ID and be like, Ebenezer? <laughs> because if you know me, I'm a pretty upbeat, cheerful kind of dude. I like to smile. I like to find reasons to smile. I don't like to just smile for no reason. But my ID for LA, though, I wasn't smiling. <laughs> because I had just encountered this thing called the DMV. And it was one of those things where you, you, know, you need ID to get ID, but if I had ID, would I need ID? <laughs> and after that went along for like three, four hours in this new city I had just been to, when, but when it was time to take the picture, I, I didn't even have the energy. <laughs> I couldn't, and I'm, I'm like, man, I'm an actor. I know I can at least give an actor smile. Got nothing. I was like, It's like, wow, this man looks angry to be in LA. <laughs> what happens in life is at some point in time, you continue to go through seasons where you have 
to renew your ID. That's the title for tonight's message. Renew your ID. It's interesting because when I went into the DMV, there, there's a pride for the, how many people here are not from Los Angeles? Well, I, I feel like if I had asked the reverse of that question, I'd be able to count all 10 of you that are actually from LA. Okay. My bad, 11. I miscounted. But the, th the interesting thing about the ID situation when you're from out of state is that for the most part, now it depends on how you feel about where you're from, but there's a pride that everybody has about where they're from. I'm a New Yorker. I'll never lose the pride of being from NY. So when it's time for me to surrender the ID of where I came from, there is this pride because I know what it took to get me where I am, and you feel like you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose your edge. You don't want to lose your roots. So you're like, man, it's so hard to give up this ID, but if you're going to fully embrace this new place where you are, if you're going to fully embrace the new season God is bringing you in, if you're going to fully embrace the next layer and level of the promise that God has over your life, you got to give up that old ID. It's time to take a new picture. It's time to put down a new address. And it's time to lay down some new roots. But giving up that, oh, oh, please, by all means. Because that last part is hard. It's real easy to try to resuscitate some weeds or some old crops and just pour water and try to make it look nice. But it's another thing to dig that thing up, pull it out, and say new roots. That's a different le level of labor altogether. And so we keep having seasons where we have to renew our IDs. I love it because the, the awesome part about having to renew your ID is at some point your address may change. At some point your picture may change. I'll stay in the picture lane just for a little bit. And this is a, a, a very in, new and free thing for you actors out there. Headshots. Nothing challenges your perception of who you are in every season like headshots for actors. Because when you come out here, you have the look on your face like I had when I first got to Morehouse. <laughs> your picture ready, your camera ready, your audition ready, your everything ready. And then after about four or five years, <laughs> it ain't the same. It's just not the same, and that's why in our line of business, it's always encouraged that you retake headshots at least every four to five years or so. Because inevitably, you are not the person you were in the previous picture. You see, the thing a lot of us actors get hung up on is how we look. We all have one favorite headshot. This is the not so secret secret. Every actor friend you know has one favorite headshot. They have the shot that they feel is the best look they've ever had in their life. And that's it. You can't tell them nothing. That is their shot. The wind hit the hair at the right moment. You know, the mouth was parsed open, just open enough so that it looked mysterious, but not too open so that you're like you're trying to eat somebody, you know? And it's just, you know, the light hits your bald head just at that right glint. So it doesn't blind somebody, but you still see everybody has their one favorite headshot. The problem with falling in love with what you look like in one phase of your life is if you keep submitting that headshot as who you are and you're no longer that person, now you are sowing confusion into your own situation.
Because if you walk in, when people submit headshots, when agents submit your headshots, when people see what lands on their desk or shows up on their, on their screen, they expect you to be that person. That's who they're saying yes to. They're saying yes to the representative that was shown to them. So if you show up and on your headshot it says you can play 18 to 27. <laughs> Some of y'all know where I'm going with this already. <laughs> but you look like you're 18 plus 27. We got a problem because you're going to show up and they're going to look at you and be like, now what? What am I going to do with this? And now you're wasting their time and more importantly, you're wasting your own time. You see, seasonally, we always have to make sure as actors, we're updating our headshots. We're always looking to see, does this picture look like who I am right now? Not just physically. Here's the thing, you can look the exact same physically. Some of us are blessed to look the same as they did eight or nine years ago. <laughs> Some of us just are. And that is a wonderful and beautiful thing, but the one thing we always take for granted is that what you see in the mirror is not what your camera picks up. You see, what the camera picks up is what's in your eyes. That's what brings you into a room. When people look at a headshot or a picture, they look into your eyes. Because the camera, I don't know the science behind it, but there's something about how a camera frames everything. It picks up something in your eyes that gives a glint into who you really are, no matter how much you try to fake it. And so you can look exactly the same. But what was in your eyes in 2006 is not the same thing in your eyes in 2017. You're a different person, I would hope. <laughs> if you haven't changed in 11 years, that's another sermon for another day. But there is something in the eyes that changes because how you experience life changes, how you view life changes, how you react to your circumstances changes. So it's different. When I talk about tonight's title, renewing your ID, there is something to having to consistently, every five years here in the state of California, you gotta renew your ID. But the beautiful part about it is, it's an opportunity to see what's different. If we never renewed our identifications, we'd have the same picture the exact same picture from the very first time we had our IDs. Some of us, those of us who grew up, all 12 people who grew up here in LA, you got your driver's license at what, 15, 16, 17, 18, seven, somewhere in that area? Can you imagine having the same picture from when you were 16 or 17 on your driver's license now? Some people can, that's cool. The problem is if you take that ID into a bank and they say we need to verify your ID, they're gonna look at the picture and then look at you and now what is supposed to be yours cannot be released to you because you don't match the picture that's on your ID. The spirit of renewing the ID constantly and consistently means this is who I am. I'm going to surrender this past group of time, this past season I'm going to surrender who I was in that season and now accept who I am now and who I'm going to be. This is who I am. And so that's the spirit that we need to make sure we're in right now. I wanna make sure that no one leaves this house with any remnants of the old ID. Because it's interesting, carrying around an expired ID, first off, it gets you in trouble. It's not legal. And we can th think about it in the natural sense, but think about it in the spiritual sense. Why would you want to walk around with validation of an older version of you? What can that get me into? 
I don't want access to anything that's open to the old version of me. That version of me is dead. You should be able to look at the identification that I present and have it match me exactly to the T. And for that matter, why would you want to go to a place? Why would you want to be a part of an environment that will validate any old ID? Dangerous. Now, there are some of us who know of these things called fake IDs. Some of us, not all of us, at some point in time have used a fake ID for whatever reason. I'm not judging you. A little bit, maybe. I'm kidding, I'm not. <laughs> but the danger of leaving, leaving remnants of your old ID around or, ha or having to have fake IDs used is now once you use this fake ID, you got to own up to what's on that piece of paper or what's on that piece of identification. And if you don't know what that really is, you don't know what you're signing up for. It sounds like fun to create your own identification out of your own hands. The problem is at some point, your imagination runs out. And now you have to own up for everything that you created. You have to keep track of it and own up for it. The dangerous part about being in an environment that does not verify any sort of identification is anybody can say they're you. I don't like going into places that don't check my ID. I go to the grocery store and they, they kind of look at my ID twice. I have a little photo thing. The photo looks like me. I have no problems with you checking my photo ID. I'm worried about the spot I go to that doesn't check. Because that means anybody can run up there with my card and do whatever they want, but I have to pay for it. Who wants to be in an environment where the real you is going to have to pay for things the fake you did? I don't want to be in an environment that encourages mistaken identity. We take the process of renewing of our IDs for granted when it's really an important thing because it's an update. And this season right now is as good a time as any to do a check and say, am I exactly who God has made me to be? Is my ID current? See, here's the interesting thing about a current ID. Your past might not necessarily be something that was so bad that you want to leave. See, when we think of turning in the old ID, we think that automatically there is a negative thing attached to it that makes us say no. That's not always the case. I wish it was, because that would make turning it in easy. But there are some portions of your life where if you're really honest with yourself, you would go back and do it again. You would. But. Here's the thing, if you go back and do that thing again, if you redo that season, you aren't that person. So you wouldn't fit into that season. It would not be nearly as enjoyable as you think it would be in that moment. So constantly renewing our ID is constantly saying that back there is back there. This right now, whoever I am right now, no matter how imperfect I am right now, no matter how hard my circumstance is right now, no matter how big the challenge is right now, this is me right now. Lord, I am here. I am submitting myself and renewing my identification in what you have in mind and not what I've thought about in the past. I want to look at a passage in Scripture which is a great warning for what happens when you have a little bit of old ID still rummaging around in a new ID season. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. <laughs> you know, there are certain books in the Bible when you name them, there's, there's like a little groan. You feel it. Job is one of them, you know. 
When your friends call, be like, ooh, I'm in the book of Job, you be like, ooh. <laughs> like, what you, where are you at now? I'm in Revelation, ooh. <laughs> the, the crazy part about both of those books is you know they have a happy ending, right? <laughs> so Revelation, <laughs> chapter two. Now John is receiving the most amazing heads up ever. He gets to see the end of the story. God pulls him into heaven, literally allows John to be taken over by the Holy Spirit, opens up heaven, and he shows John how it all goes down. But at first, before we get to the vision part of it, God has a message for several of the churches that are currently in the land. And at this point, he's speaking to the church in Pergamos. It says, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right. Now, he's telling John, these are the messages I want to give to different churches. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right. These things say he who has the sharp two-edged sword that is Jesus I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. And you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Hold on one second. I'm not going to rush through that. I know your works and where you dwell. The interesting thing about living with a past or expired ID is, depending on where you are, you can get away with it. Your friends will let you ride with an expired ID. Your job, depending on how cool you are with your boss, might let you ride with an expired ID. But there is an authority that eventually you will meet up with that says this ID is no longer acceptable. When you start to get to a place where you need the next level revelation from God, you cannot bring the old expired ID. In order for John to have this encounter, he could not have been John from the beginning of Acts, John from the beginning of the book of John, and Matthew, Mark, and he couldn't be that John. He had to get to this place right now, and God said, okay, you are exactly who I have purposed for you to be. You are the one who is going to reveal all of this. Now I can bring it to you. I know your works and where you dwell. Now, in this particular city, this church, Pergamos, was in a place where it was really, really hard to continue to do the works of God because it was not an environment that was fully, fully flowing in the Holy Spirit. Hello, Los Angeles. How are you? How are we feeling in sunny Los Angeles? This was a church that was flowering in a place where it was very hard to adhere strictly to the word of God, to adhere to the Holy Spirit, where they were constantly surrounded by temptation and waywardness and things that would lead you and draw you consistently away from the presence and the power of God. And yet, this church flourished enough so that in Revelation, God had a word for them. I know your works. God knows. You see, when you bring your expired ID, you're not bringing anything new. He knows. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. Literally, he's saying where you are is like the heart of Satan's workplace. I know where you are. And I know even though you're there, you are still doing work. And I commend that. And you hold fast to my name. You did not deny my faith, even in the days when, in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you. Now they watched Antipas, who was a faithful man of God, get murdered in front of them in this city, and they still rolled with God. So don't think because 
you have your expired ID that you won't be able to do things. You will. You will still be capable. There are still things. There's still a level that you can get to with your expired ID. But at some point, you have reached the ceiling. This church reached the ceiling. I know your works, where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. You hold fast to my name. You don't deny it. My faith even, and you don't deny my faith even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Next verse. But I have a few things against you. God will acknowledge the good you're doing. Your expired identification doesn't wipe away the good that you're doing. It just keeps you from doing great. You can do a whole lot of good acting in the old version of who you are. You can still do good, but can you do great? But I have a few things against you because you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Pause right there. This is an old problem. This problem existed hundreds of years before John got this revelation. This is an old problem. Now, this church is flowing in all of the works and all the steadfastness. This church is doing all of the things that it's supposed to be doing. But in it, there's still some old problems. See, when you don't renew your ID, you just let this slide. When your identification is not continually renewed, when you don't continue to submit to that authority and say, this is who I am, is there anything in my past that needs to be checked off? Is there anything in who I am that needs to be left behind? Is there anything in who I am that needs to be transformed and changed? When you continue to submit and renew your ID, that's when the red flags come up. And you get the red flags so that you can check them off and move forward. One of the harsh parts of the DMV, I don't enjoy it, but it happens. You go to renew your ID and you find tickets. Mm. Find old tickets, tickets you forgot about. You went to the windshield, pulled it off, mad, threw it in the glove compartment. It took up room. You cleaned out your car, you threw it away. They sent the letters. You're like, eh, I'm not worried about it. <laughs> I hope you don't really do that, but some people do. <laughs> and then it's time to renew your ID. And you get to AAA or the DMV, and you think you're going to pay $55. <laughs> you looked it up. You're like, how much is a new ID? How much is it? $55, bet. You show up, you're ready to pay $55. You write out a check for $55. Then they hit you with the real number. And it's 55 plus decimal might be moved over a few. Another direction. And it's because you have red flags that you have not dealt with. And you cannot proceed forward. You cannot receive this renewal of your identification. You cannot receive the stamp that says this is who you are and are going to be for the next five years, 10 years, seasons. You can't receive it until you deal with the red flags. So this church is receiving a heads up. This was why this moment was happening with all of the churches in Revelation who received the letters from John. They were getting a heads up. Hey, I know you guys are doing work, but this, these things, these few things, I love that the Lord just says few. It wasn't a laundry list because there was more right that he listed than wrong. But the problem here was that they were holding on to old stuff. These were old customs. These were things that should have been driven out long before. And it was there, it stayed there for tens, twenties, hundreds of years until finally it was reaching a point where this was not going to be able to walk into the fullness of what God had in store for them. 
The fullness of the revelation that God had for the churches when they were created could not be enacted or realized until this was driven out in this area. It was time to renew that ID. Next chapter, I mean next verse, excuse me. Thus, you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. The Nicolaitans, uh, hmm, how can I, yeah. So the Nicolaitans practiced things which were parts of the church of Ephesus before they received the revelation of God. So another thing, this was another past thing from another region that was brought in, that they allowed to be a part of what was going on. And yet, God just says, this is a thing that I hate. Now, truthfully, I shouldn't even have to look up what Nicolaitans is. Once it says, this is a thing I hate, I don't want it. I don't need details. Once God says no, I don't really need to know why. It just says, it's got to go. And that's one of the things that we also have to deal with when we renew the ID is once we find out what those red flags are, getting angry and throwing a fit and saying, oh my God, I don't know how this happened, that doesn't solve anything. Right. You're wasting time. The time you are literally separating yourself from accepting what God has for you when you sit there and say, what is this thing? Oh my God. And you obsess over it. You're obsessing over all the details. Just know it has to be taken care of. It doesn't matter how the ticket came about. You still got to pay it. You can do all of the detective work you want. You still got to pay it. It doesn't matter what your explanation is. If you can account for the time and the place, and you still got to pay the ticket. So if, if we leave with nothing else tonight, I want to make sure we have this sealed in us. What red flags on the inside right now? What pieces of the old version of who we used to be need to be handled and dealt with? Because if we don't deal with them, we cannot move forward. It's interesting because one of the things I always hear, and I'm sure I've said it a few times myself, is we love to remind ourselves that Jesus paid the cost. Jesus paid the cost for our freedom. Jesus paid the cost for our identity in God. Jesus paid the cost for the freedom to be who we are. Jesus paid the cost for us to be renewed. And all of that is very true. But I want to make sure we understand something. When somebody pays for something for you and you go to pick it up, you know you got to show your ID, right? Jesus went to that cross, died, came back. He took care of the bill. If we are going to receive the fullness of the delivery, the fullness of the package, of what it is to walk redeemed by God, you got to submit your ID. Because if you bring your old ID, you won't be able to take it. If you bring forth an expired identification, you can't have it. Expired identification limits your access. Renewing, the process of renewing, and I'm not going to sit here and tell you that the renewal process is easy. It is not. It's never as easy as we think it's going to be because inevitably we discover something or God reveals something to us that we had not accounted for. Hello, parking tickets. But when we find out what these are, now it becomes, all right, what do I need to do to move forward? What do I need to do so that this renewal process is as short as possible? Because I need to be and accept all that God has for me. And I need to do it right now. Yeah. 
The interesting thing about waiting on renewing your identification is the longer you wait, you know you gotta pay for that, right? There's always a fine. The longer we wait, the longer we think we can push the idea of renewing the identification, of making our identification current, the longer we think we can ignore it and let it just kind of stew in the background and get to it when we feel like it, the more we have to pay, the more it costs us. That's why renewing, and not just renewing, but renewing in a timely fashion, because there is a window, there is a purpose, there is a time that God allows, there is a season that God allots, and he says, this is your season to get it right. This is your season to move forward. This is your season to claim exactly who I need you to be for the next season. This is the window. You have one month, you have two months, you have five months, you have one season. You might only have 30 minutes, but you need to do it right now so that you don't have to pay the fine of being late. And at whatever the cost, do it. Just get it done. Get that new ID card in your hand. Whatever it takes, just get it done. So this church and I don't mean this church, I mean the church that I'm speaking of here, this church of Pergamos, had this old, old issue that needed to be dealt with. And the only way God could address it was through a messenger. So he sent John, he said, John, I need you to speak to these different churches. This is interesting because depending on the text that you read, this church is labeled as the church of compromise. See, walking around with ex expired identification is compromise. It is deliberately accepting a lesser, past, out-of-date version of you and trying to make it function in the now and trying to prepare it for a future where it is going to be obsolete. That's why keeping old identification, and even beyond that, keeping things around you that, in, that inspire old identification. Earlier I mentioned the box that I keep my old stuff in. I have my old ID, I think I have my first room key. But those are things that you look at, you're like, haha, that's funny. Now, the dangerous part about keeping the box is there's an old, outdated version of you that is attached to some of the things in that box. And every time we reminisce, we want to open the box and relive expired ID glory. And you just, oh, and you start flipping through the old pictures and the Polaroids. I don't know if I go quite that far back. The old articles. For some of us, it's the old emails. I'm like, man, you have 30,000 unchecked emails. <laughs> emails that go back to the very first email ever sent. <laughs> but you just won't delete them because, oh, when I got that first email, I was this person and life was so great and it was wonderful and it just reminds me of all these things and the feelings just flood back and I remember the music I listened to and the car that I was in and, and all of this reminiscing Meanwhile, you're in the present, and time is just running right past you. You will reminisce your way right out of your promise. <laughs> if we're not careful, we will reminisce our way through the period we're supposed to be looking forward, where God is revealing what's coming, but we're too busy looking at what's behind us because we want to look at expired ID glory. 
What I want to make sure everyone in this house focuses on is renewed ID glory. There is glory on the renewal of your identification. There is glory on having yourself certified as who God made you to be right now. There's instruction that you need to receive. There's things you need to behold. There is vision that you need to lay hold of. And there is a vision you need to enact. And it starts when you can submit to God and say, Lord, tell me who I am right now. I would love to tell you that renewing the ID means this next season is going to be super easy and filled with joy and you're going to skip through lilies, but I would be lying to you because that's not true. Renewing your ID means accepting who you are right now and everything and every test that comes with it. When I decided to get that second ID, when I, when, I did, when I moved to graduate school, I knew I was going for harder work. I knew I was going to be challenged in a way I'd never be challenged before. I knew I was going to work in a way I'd never worked before, that I was going to have to be taught in a way I'd never been taught before. But if I didn't accept this harder thing that I knew was coming, I was not going to be the next level of person I needed to be. So I don't want anyone here to step into the renewal of your ID and think it's going to be all smiles. It's not going to be the freshman year smile, at least not the whole time. But there's something to the courage and there's something to the knowing that no matter what or no matter who God says I'm going to be, as long as I am that person, I can withstand everything that God has said needs to happen. Because every single one of those circumstances are for you. I'll say that again. Every single thing, once you lay hold of who God says you need to be right now, everything that happens from that moment is for you. It may look or feel like it is against you, but I promise you it is for you. And not only is it for the you that is right now, it's for the you that is being developed. It's for the you that is to come. And you can't get to any of those challenges if your ID is expired. I want to move to verse 17. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I want to pause right on that word. Understand that renewing your ID is, is overcoming. I want you to associate in your mind and your spirit that the renewal of your identification is overcoming. Letting go of past glory is not an easy thing. It's overcoming to move forward. It is overcoming when you say, me standing in this place is not enough. I cannot stand still. Standing still is just not enough for me. For some of us, just standing still was the battle. As long as I don't backslide, I'm good. In the season where you need to renew your ID, if you want to get that fresh, pressed piece of identification that says stamped, sealed, delivered, transformed, moving forward. If you're going to get that ID, it's not enough to stand still. It's you have to move forward. You have to overcome settling for less. In order to get that stamp for renewal, you have to overcome. To him who overcomes, I will give some of, oh, Lord, have mercy. I will give him, whew, my God, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. I'm sorry. That hidden manna, though? Yeah. I mean, that's the manna that just makes your head turn like, the hidden manna? So you're going to give me things I can't see. Yeah. 
So all of the time I've spent envisioning what it's like to walk in fullness, everything that I have on my vision board, everything that I've liked on Instagram, everything that I've cut out of magazines, everything that my mama told me was gonna happen, that my grandmama told me was gonna happen, you mean you're going to give me things that I have not seen yet? I'm an actor, so when you challenge my imagination, you're doing big things, God. Big things. To him who overcomes, to him who steps forward, to him who refuses to stand still, to him who refuses to walk backward, to him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat. I love this part. And I will give him a white stone, and on the stone. A new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. So if I just take this one step forward, if I just give up this old expired and dead ID, you're going to feed me in a way I could have never imagined. And you're basically gonna make my identity theft proof. No one can steal who I am. No one's going to be able to take this identity from me. No experience can rob me of who you call me. There is no wind of change that can blow on this stone and change the writing on it. This is going to be who I am from here forward. And nothing can change that. People will copy it, but there will never be another original. And all I have to do is just take this, just, just, just one step. All I have to do is give up this old, weathered, blistered, plastic thing that has my old name on it with my old school on it with where I used to be from on it. And I can lay down new roots in you. I don't know about y'all, but deal. You can take every old ID, let me go in the basement. You can take what, every piece of plastic that I did, you can have it, take it, take all of it. Take the old shoes, take the old clothes, take the old books, take the old DVDs, take the box, take the second box, take all the boxes, take everything. You can take my old stuff, you can take some of my present stuff, take that too. It's time to have a yard sale. Because I need to make some room for all of this manna that has been hidden from me that I've never seen before. I gotta get all these old cards out of my wallet because I need to make room for the stone that has my name on it that nobody can take away from me. And all I have to do is just take. All I have to do is step out of 2009. All I gotta do is step out of 2012. All I need to do is step out of 2015. All I have to do is step into right now. And I get all of that. Family, we're in a season now where it's time to renew your ID. I don't care how long you think the line is going to be 
I don't care how much you think it's going to cost you. The cost has already been paid for. All you have to do is show up. I don't care how long that line is, wait on it. If you can wait on the DMV, I'm pretty sure you can wait online for the anointing that God has on the current version of you. I think you can wait for that. And don't leave that place. There is a place that you need to be in. There is a place, whoo, trying to move from this. There is a place that your heart and your mind and your spirit are completely lined up. It's where you need to be. It's like where we were with worship. That place where everyone was when we worshiped. And then we prayed. And then we praised. That alignment right there, that is where you need to be. And if that lasts for five minutes or five hours, do not move. Don't move. When you're in the DMV and you're waiting to renew your ID, it doesn't matter how long it's going to take. You don't go out and get a soda. <laughs> you're not missing your place in line. Listen, you just have to be thirsty, figure it out. But stay in that place. It's that place that says, God, renew my identification. I will not stop worshiping. I will not stop praising. I will not stop praying. I will not stop petitioning until my identification has been renewed. Give me all of the red flags. Me and you, Lord, will handle them. But I will not move until my identification is renewed. Let's stand. Family, I'm going to make this very quick. If you can stay, I would highly encourage that you do. Because one of the things I've learned is for this moment right now, you're a part of it. Whether you are someone who will come forward or whether you are a person or someone who stays there, your presence is encouragement beyond what you could imagine. So if you don't have to leave, please stay. Right now, if you have been trying to get by with the expired old version of who you are, just come on down. You know who I'm talking to. Come on down. Just come on, come on. You know you are doing life with the dead you, with the dying you, and you're, getting, and you're getting away with it. You're getting by. You're getting by. But that's the problem. You're just getting by. If you are living life, and it is not life more abundantly because there is some old expired ID habits, Come on down. We are going to leave this altar littered with expired identifications. Come on down. As people are making, way, making their way here, I'm going to call down the next group of people. If you have yet to start the relationship with God, the walk with God, where he is where you are getting your identification renewal from. If you haven't started that relationship yet, if you know you have been leaning on your own understanding of who you are, and you are ready to say, Lord, let's do this together. 
if you're ready to start your walk, if you're ready to get that identification card that says the new name that God has for you on it, come on down. Let's start this walk together right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. This is that window. Right now. Right now. Right now. I've made this very walk. I know what it's like to walk with an identification. Watch this, that you think is current, but it's expired. You just haven't looked close enough at it. And then there's that one day where you look and you say, oh my God, this is expired. And you've just been walking around with it as if it was current. I've done the walk when I decided that Jesus was going to be the only person to tell me who I was. If you want to start that walk tonight, come down and come down knowing you're not alone. Come down knowing that you are not alone. Come down knowing there is a lane, there is room for you here. Come down knowing there is a promise over the, the greater version of you that God has for you. Come on down. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father God, for allowing the authentic renewal of identification. No fake copies here, no counterfeit copies here, but this experience, this moment here at this altar, you have allowed for those who have come forward, for those who have a heart to come forward, for those who are viewing this through live stream, who have come forward where they are. You've allowed this moment to be the beginning of ID renewal. Father, we accept all of the process, whether it's every week, every month, every year, whatever cycle you have for us, Father, where we will continually renew and renew and renew, we will do it. And we do it, Father God, because you, we know that you have made a promise, that you have promised that as we renew our identification, as we accept the version of us that you purposed and planned for us from birth, as we lay hold of the process of developing and maturing into that person, experience after experience, day after day, encounter after encounter, we eagerly await the stone with our new name on it. And we open our hearts, we open our minds, and Father, we open our hands because we want the hidden manna. So Father, today, in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we lay every single label, every characteristic, every habit, every thought of expired identification, we lay it right here at this altar in the name of Jesus. And we lay it here never to pick it up again. Father, from this moment forward, we bring ourselves to you and accept that renewing is a new way of life. We now do life and life more abundantly because we have entered the process of renewing, because we have accepted the process of renewing. And right now, Father God, we pray you blow a fresh wind. Gather up the chaff that is the expired IDs. Gather it up, Father God. Blow with your wind. Blow with the Holy Spirit. Blow it out of this building. Blow it out of this, out of this environment and blow it into your holy fire and burn it up so that it will never come back again. Father, we thank you for the ash of our expired IDs burning right now. To the sweet aroma, let it reach your nostrils as a great, great sacrifice, Lord God. 
And from this moment forward, everything that comes with who you say we are right now, who you say we are right now, everything that comes with it, we say, yeah, we say yes, we say absolutely. Thank you, Father, for opening heaven and allowing new IDs to come raining down. And Father, cover us with your presence. Seal us with the Holy Spirit. Seal us with your word. Let it be permanently burned into our minds and our spirit so that nothing and no one can take away what we lay hold of today. Father, from this moment, we say let us renew and live a life of consistent, diligent renewal of the identification. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen.